Hey, what is up, everyone? It's Rich. All right, we're going to do an open that book. Um, I had my I, I I bought a couple of books. Um, I had done a review um, for Patreon of um, anime um, backgrounds book that I bought recently, and that was kind of what I thought I had on deck. I decided to do this. These been sit, have been sitting out in my office for a while, and um, I have the Court of Owls, and I have this. And a real common question I get, um, I think it was funny, I thought there was, like, hair on the page. I was <laughs> <laughs> it's hair from this character here. I was like, what is there hair on the book? Um, uh, a real common question I get because people people know me um, as an inker is, um, where can I get high-res scans of pencils um, to practice my inks um, for people that are aspiring inkers or even pencilers that want to work on their inks? Um, I always recommend these books. Um, this, this one in particular is still really, really cheap. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I am getting over my... Um, cold thing but uh, um yeah these this was like twelve dollars on ebay i bought it probably four or five months ago uh and it's all pencils this one is unusual it has actually a little bit of jocks work in it and jock stuff is already ink but let me pause this for a second i'm gonna take the dust jacket off of this okay i'll show you the back this is like a nice little drawing but these these are great resources for um getting pencils that you could practice on. All you would need to do is throw this on like an eight and a half by 11 scanner, scan it at maybe 400 DPI, um, and print out a page or a panel and in blue, and you're good to go. You've got some really, really killer pencils to practice over. Um, and uh, there's a whole bunch of these books. There's David Finch, Tony Daniel, Jim Lee. Um, I think that there's a Cuba Brothers one. Marvel sometimes will do, um, they call them director's cuts. And in the back of the book, they'll actually have all the pencils. Sometimes uh, th three or four different versions. A lot of those are digital um, books, though. Uh, I know that they did a Ryan Stegman book, um, and it was only a digital only. Um, but it had the pencils only, the inks only, and then the colors. So even if you're a colorist, um, this type of stuff could come in handy. But um, Greg Capullo is a great um, artist to look at for a lot of reasons. One, he he draws great. He's he's just so awesome. His stuff is so energetic. Um, but on top of it, um, one of the great things about Greg's work is it's not as refined maybe as some people's pencils. And I think that that it's important. Sorry, the <laughs> told you there's some challenges with shooting open that books. Um, uh, one of the cool things about Greg's work is is the fact that it it it's you know you can kind of see the work that goes into the page. Some people have uh, very perfect um, finished art, and um, it can be um, confusing to someone that's learning because you you almost think that you need to draw as tight as an inker um, with your finished pencils, but you really don't. Um, you know, like you don't need to erase all the scribbly lines underneath. Them. And so, I think Greg is fun to look at because he he keeps um, that energy and sort of um, spontaneity in the um, art. So it's always super cool to see. But this is, we're not even in the book yet. These are just little preview images. But uh, yeah, and um, he's a great inker too. Greg, Greg will occasionally ink his covers. Um, and uh, he always does a fantastic job. I actually really like his inks on himself. I think that they look great. And all the inkers that he has always do a great job too. So here we go. Let's get into this. Um, this is, again, just a, a zoomed in shot. But look how kick-ass this is. Greg is getting together an art book um, that he's been posting previews for for the last um, I don't know, month on Instagram. It's going to be phenomenal. It's it's going to be a nice big, I picture kind of like a coffee table book. Um, and uh, I'm excited to get it because I think it will be really, really just uh, interesting, high quality, um, inspiring, all the good things that you want from a book. So here we're getting to the pages. So these do come lettered. Uh, I, I'm sometimes torn on if, if I think that these unwrapped books should have the lettering or not. Um, I get that people would want to read the story, but I also think that people that are buying a pencil-only book kind of probably are artists most or interested in the art. And so, you know, the word balloons do cover up some some art. So uh, like I said, it's, it's one of those things where I'm not 100% sure. What do you think? Do, do you think that they should have the lettering? I'd be, I would be actually really curious to see what, what, what like a consensus would be on that. And I'm not trying to just fish for um, people to comment on the video, but I am curious. 
Do you think a normal person would buy this? I just don't picture that many kind of just like Batman fans going, oh, there's a pencil only book. Oh, I'll get that. I mean, maybe. I, I mean, honestly, when I first started collecting comics, I, I really had no intention of drawing them. It happened quick. But but I wasn't like the first you know times I was going to the comic book store. I was just going because I, I liked comic books and thought that they were cool and fun to read. And it was a, like a neat new hobby that kind of extended off of my um, interest in video games. Pretty excited going into summer, I have to be honest. I mean, I know summer I started, but just the last month I've kind of felt like I've been in a black hole a little bit. But uh, um, yeah, it's like Comic-Con is next week. That's always, I think... It's always the beginning of my year for me, or how I kind of consider it, um, is like that's that's sort of like New Year's Eve, uh, and then when you come out of Comic Con, uh, I used to always kind of make my plans for for the the year, so it's exciting. But uh, look at this face, man! There was a point on Spawn where Greg got so good. I remember seeing a couple of issues in a row and just going like, man, this guy is like, he got it. He was good before, but man, something fell into place, and it just got so badass. Look at that. Nice hand. This is cool. Man, this was a scary scene in the book. I remember reading this. It's like everyone dead in the office. It was so brutal. <laughs> Sorry for the glare. Or the shadow, I mean. Look at this. This is a nice panel. And this is this is interesting stuff to see, too, is how does the penciler handle shots like this? Greg, Greg will sometimes, you know, put the camera behind, like, a chain link fence. Or, you know, he does he does some really interesting thing with um, the way that he picks his shots. And uh, scene in pencil is definitely helpful for, I think, people that are, that are interested in learning to draw because of the fact that... Um, uh, when we see it sometimes um, penciled, inked, and colored, and in particular once it's in the book, it can be confusing to know what exactly, what did the artist, you know, the pencil artist, what did they put down here? Like, is this a digital special effect? Let me try to let me move my lamp a little bit and see if I can help this shadow. Let me move this one up, too. Like I said, it's, this is going to be a little bit of a work in progress. No, that doesn't work. Um getting these videos to, to be their best um, look. Actually, let me pause this for one second. I'm going to do one other thing. Okay, I stuck on an, a, th a third light. <laughs> Light's a big deal. It's actually, it's definitely something that I'm going to um, kind of work with in my office uh, after a Comic-Con. It's just desk, desk light in general. Man, Greg did a really great uh, cover recently. It was like Batman and Joker, and I think on like a motorcycle. Oh, my God. It was so good. Look at this middle panel. It's great. Really cool layout. Zoom in on this. was interesting i was thinking about greg um the other day and like kind of his personality online the shaved head the sunglasses the big mustache and he's kind of like the zach wild of like comic books but like if you ever followed him when he was doing the wizard basic training thing he seemed <laughs> it's like a totally different person he had like kind of shaggy hair sort of feathery and had like the wings you know like when your hair goes long and your hair sticks out like over your ears um and he just he seemed like it's like is that the same guy how did he turn into like such a badass <laughs> like, i'd be scared to meet him now he's like he's intimidating he's drinking valhalla coffee and <laughs> This is a great panel. Okay, so let's let's try to get into just Batman stuff. And then we'll look at a little tiny bit of the jock stuff. Um there's jock in here too. Made me think for a second. Um, so like uh, I think someone who's kind of similar to Capullo, although they draw a little, a little differently, is um I think Silvestri kind of has this spontaneous, aggressive sort of approach to, to drawing. Um, 
rare. Like, I don't think we'll ever get a pencil book of Silvestri stuff, to be honest. Um, but uh, <clears throat> I'm still hoping for that Batman project that he was working on. I hope that that comes out someday. It's been years. I mean, you're talking six, seven years now, so I don't know. It doesn't look good, to be honest, but I'm hopeful. Patient. What can you really do, you know? Oh, this is cool. I didn't even see him in there. But yeah, you know, spending a few minutes a day looking at something like this really, really could benefit um, any kind of aspiring pencilers. Um, I think it's just, it's good material to look at. Uh, it's it's a good level of detail. He's great at moving the camera around, so it's going to get you used to seeing interesting shots. And all kinds of good stuff will come from um, looking at someone that draws like this. Because one of the things that I always said about um, someone like Joe Matarera and J. Scott Campbell is I think that they, they had really good influences as kids. And so their idea of just what cool drawing was, was cool. You know, they were looking at the right stuff that when they attempted to draw, there was energy and dynamics to it and excitement and it felt alive. And, um, you know, the more of that that's sort of the norm for you, then just when you come up with an idea on your own, it's going to have more, it's going to have more oomph. It's going to be more interesting. So this is some of the jock stuff. And again, he, he, I don't know really like his technique for working, but clearly he doesn't do full pencils or, or didn't um, have them for this. So these are short stories that are I've like kind of the ender, I think, for each issue. I'll give you a little taste of that. Some cool stuff. But the main focus on this video is Capullo, so let's we'll skip ahead. But just so you know that there's a little bit of this. This is a really nice inked Capullo piece. Again, he's he's a really, really good inker. There's no two ways bad. In fact, I've, I say this in many videos, too. Uh, and people know now, because they've seen him upload some of the stuff to Instagram. He's a really good digital colorist on top of it, too. So some of the fantasy um, stuff that he's done where he colors himself, man, it looks so good. So he's the trifecta and this is always interesting too because when you have a character all black you know people um i think wonder like do they shade in with pencil the blacks or do they not some artists do some don't i mean you don't necessarily need it need to do it sometimes it helps you see um the um composition and sort of the uh, graphic read that you're going to get on a page with it shaded in. Um, so when you, when you have a large area of black on a page, it can be an eye suck, meaning that it's going to draw your eye to it. And so if you have um, uh, like not great shapes, uh, it can, um, it, it can really end up being distracting and kind of hold the reader back. Man, this is really detailed. Let's, let's zoom in on this. These are fun pages to do this type of stuff. Victor Bogdanovic and I had some Batman um, and uh, Superman underwater and all the bubbly uh, like air bubbles and this kind of stuff is really, really fun to ink. You just got to kind of take your time and sort of work through it methodically. But uh, the effort pays off. This stuff always just looks badass. This is great. Man, look at how detailed this little panel is. I'm actually going to be doing a Joe Matarera demo, uh, inking demo for uh, Patreon. Um, I, uh, I got a printer and I need to print like kind of once a day to keep the heads like moving fluid. So uh, I just wanted to see if it could print on um, Bristol board. And uh, I just, I was like, God, what should I print? I was going to do a Finch piece. Not, not, not to do a blue line, to be clear. I just, I wanted to just see if it would even print on artboard. And I decided I did, um, it's a face-off piece with like Battle Chasers. But uh, I'm going to slowly kind of ink that and throw up little demos on Patreon. Um, so if you haven't checked out my Patreon, it might be a good time to hop in on that. Uh, 3 dollars gets you full access. The 1 dollar tier 
is is not an option anymore so people that are on it you guys need to up your thing or the um account will get canceled for you so i had it a dollar for two years so but it's three bucks now um but there's probably 700 videos up there but yeah i'm excited to do it um and it printed well on the the bristol board so that was cool it's a Epson ET15000. It'll print 13 by 19. This is nice. So always, I, I, I'm always uh, like uh, the bed sheets. It's a, it's a more common thing than you would imagine in comics. But uh, at some point, if you draw a few stories, you'll inevitably have to draw a bed and, and the um, blankets and stuff like that. So, uh, be ready. <laughs> It'll happen to you too. Every character sleeps <laughs> or will have a scene in a bedroom. The Batman. He's like, What are you doing, Gordon? Right, let's get to some action. We've got like five minutes left. Oh, look at this. At some point, I should try to ink a Capullo piece, to be honest. I've never, I don't think I've ever inked anything of Greg's. I just, I, the reason that I do inking demos is because there's this, there's still a lot of people that want to learn to ink. And um, it's important to actually encourage it, honestly. I had someone ask um, recently that they said that companies are starting to deter people from inking. Um, that, that They were told that uh, this was a smaller company, but but like I would consider it a medium small company. That um, they don't like to pay two people for the job now, so they would prefer to just hire pencilers to ink themselves. But still, the, you still have to learn the ink. That's the thing. So the inking part um, is important. And as we all know, original art is definitely worth having. So as nice as digital is, um, if you ink stuff traditionally, uh, you will have an original that you can sell, which is nice. You sick maniac. <laughs> That's awesome. Reminds me of the Arkham Knight games with the chattering teeth in the hallways. Ah, oh, this is so cool. But yeah, re remember, remember to comment on if you think that these should have the word balloons or not. The lettering. Do you want the story in these books? Or would you rather just have the full on art? Capullo is honestly, he's really, really good at leaving room for the word balloons because he doesn't want to have to draw stuff that's going to get covered up anyway. It's a waste of time. So if you actually look at this stuff, he's he leaves blank areas, which is, is more challenging than you might imagine. Depending on what you're asked to draw, it's not that easy sometimes. I mean, Scott Snyder is a really, really good writer, but... Um, yeah, you know, sometimes you get these writers that they want a whole bunch of talking and it's like, dude, this is an eight panel page and you've got three people jammering it up in all the panels. Where's the room to draw three people and fit in all of your dialogue? So it's something that as a pencil, you you may, um, you, there's a challenge you might face with these kind of quick. Nice stuff. Here's another cool cover. Wow, it's funny. I don't. I honestly don't even remember this cover. I don't know. Maybe if I saw it in color, I would remember it. It's pretty cool. Again, Capullo inks. He, at some point, he kind of just started inking his own covers on this book. He doesn't always, but uh, he started to more. This is nice. And honestly, like, I'll throw this in because some people don't know. Um, like, uh, if you're ever get doing something for another inker, um, people will put X's. X indicates black. It's it's kind of a, it's something that, that uh, it's like BWS means black with stars. So there's a few little shorthands that people will throw in on pages. But, uh, yeah, if you have a lot of black in an area and you don't want to, like, sit and scribble it all out, uh Comic book pencils will put an X, and the X, you can see like one right here, means um, like fill it in black. Now, now, you can put a little bit of texture in it. You don't have to make it like a flat black. Sometimes that looks a little boring. But uh, anyway, overall, what they're asking for is mostly black there. Kind of depending on the style, you may um, get get uh, more creative with the black. Man, that's brutal. 
All right, so we're 20 minutes. I'm going to wrap this up. We'll do like a couple more pages and then we'll call it quits. Um, but uh, yeah, hopefully that, that was fun. It was fun for me. I'm, I'm always happy to look at some great Capullo and to see it in pencils is a real cool thing. So we'll continue with the open that books for a little bit and go through my book collection and see what we can, what we can find. I've got all kinds of cool stuff. So it'd be cool. What is this? Oh, it's the fancy lettering. All right, let's try to find one big. Oh, that's really nice. Damn. He's he's really good with this size figure, man. There were some shots in Court of Owls where he would have like characters talking kind of like this and man, they're really good. So solid. Like like Batgirl's pose is really cool. This is nice too. Quite detailed little panel, to be honest. But see, this would be a good example of like Scott Snyder has very little dialogue in here. But but Greg had to come, he had to cram one two three four five six six characters in this little panel and this is a one two three four five six almost seven panel page um, and uh, it's a lot of characters I always say that like average comic book page will usually have about thirteen characters on it so let's count we've got one two three we had six in this right so it's nine ten eleven twelve thirteen. 14, 15, 16, 17. So 17, 17 drawings of characters on this page, approximately, um, you know, give or take you know, body, you know, how much body is in it. But uh, yeah, it'll, it'll, it'll test your skills. Here's another one. Look at how many characters are on it. So if you want to work yourself out, definitely give sequentials a shot. All right. I'll talk to you guys later. Have a great day and uh, make sure to hit the like and uh, I will see you guys tomorrow with a freshie. <laughs> All right. Later.